Silent night.
Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. <clears throat> Grant that we, we have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit, he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> The first lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 6 through 12. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night they shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And those who gather it shall drink in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, Say to daughter Zion, see your salvation comes, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemer of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out a city not forsaken. The word of the Lord.
This is Psalm 97. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of the islands be glad. Cloud and darkness are round about him, righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightning light up the world, the earth sees and is afraid. The mountains met like wax at the presence of the Lord, as the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded by who worship carved image and delight in false gods, bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the city of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the life of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprang up from the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, your righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is from the book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 4 to 7. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own town to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, 
Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see your salvation comes. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Of all the prophets, the prophet Isaiah is the most well-known to Christians, the most quoted in all of the New Testament. I should actually talk about the scroll of Isaiah rather than about the prophet Isaiah, since most scholars believe that the book of Isaiah was written over 200 centuries by at least three different authors. I am not sharing these facts to teach a class about the prophets, as I am pretty sure that on Christmas Eve we are not that interested in doing Bible history. What I think is important for us to know, though, is that the scroll of Isaiah has been written over a very difficult time for the people of Israel. During those 200 years, the people of Judah had seen their kingdom falling apart. Jerusalem being besieged and attacked and fell at the end of their enemies. The light of the people being sent into exile in Babylon where they served. Until 70 years later, they were finally allowed to come back. And although that day when they returned may have felt like a wonderful day, they still had to find the whole city in ruins and the temple to be rebuilt from scratch. Difficult time indeed. And yet, covering the whole period, we have the book of Isaiah, the prophet, or I should say the prophets, and all the other prophets we've been talking about since the beginning of the season of Advent. The prophets being with the people all along, warning them, nudging them, comforting them. And in the voices of the prophets, the presence of God being manifested through them in spite of all, in the midst of it all. I find it helpful in difficult times to be reminded of the difficult times people had before us. And especially, I guess, for us as Christians, to be reminded of the difficult times of the people of God. Through adversity, sorrow, and loss, their voices today can still be heard, and they show us how they have struggled, doubted, lost their faith, and then found it again, how they have managed to keep the hope alive and remain faithful through the messiness, the loss, and the pain. And mostly, I find it helpful to see how God remained faithful to God's people 
in spite of all the suffering they had endured from the hands of others, and in spite even of the hurt they had inflicted on God, on themselves, and on one another. In our passage today, after 70 years in exile, the people are back to Jerusalem. After such a long time of repentance, a time so long that actually at some point the scroll of Isaiah tells us that Jerusalem has not now paid twice for her sin. 70 years reflecting and praying and thinking about how things went so wrong in the promised city for their kings and all the people. And now on that day, um, from uh, where our reading is taken from, they're ready to start anew, and God is ready to start anew with them, picking up where they left off for something better, rebuilding together their life and their story. Seventy years of exile. Let's think about that for a moment. The people had been for 70 years away from their temple. For 70 years, they had been away from their city. For 70 years, they had been away from their land. And for some of them, for 70 years, they have been away from their family. That is, of course, for the few ones who survived such a long period. We've been two years in this pandemic, two years. And we are already at the stage where we feel we cannot take it anymore, right? Not for another minute. So I'm not going to tell you today, see, what are we complaining about? Because one thing I have noticed over time is that it's never useful when we suffer to be reminded that others have it or had it worst. Generally, it just drags us down a little bit more, adding guilt to sorrow. But as I have just mentioned, there are two things I find useful. The first thing that may help us is to understand how God can use this time of exile, whatever the exile might be, to bring us to a deeper level of spirituality, a deeper level of wisdom and maturity. And this is certainly what God did with Israel. Maybe you remember from a few weeks ago how the prophet Malachi calls the exile a time of purification. And yes, it can happen that through suffering we become better people. We learn what really matters. We take care of each other. That happens sometimes. We also have to acknowledge that sometimes also suffering does not bring out the best in ourselves. We get impatient, we fight, we try to survive at the expense of others. So the second thing today I notice to be really useful and really beautiful is to see how God remains faithful to us. No matter what we do to ourselves, no matter what others do to us, God still comes to find us, to redeem us, and to bring us back to life. This is indeed what we see in the passage of Isaiah. God, ready to start it all over again with his people, when the people thought that it was all over. God, again, ready to pick up where they left off, yet transformed and renewed. And God, ready to rebuild Jerusalem and to bring back joy, strength, and abundance. And the text even says, wine and bread for all. And this is the story of the Bible, you see. It's how you could summarize the whole Bible. God finding a way for God's people. God finding a way to God's people. And this is, of course, the story of Christmas we remember tonight. We so often hear messages like that at church or among Christians. Have you found God? Have you found faith? But in the end, we know how unable we are to find God or to find faith, and sometimes just to find any hope or joy in the world. Because in the end, it's never us finding God. It's God finding us. 
It's God finding us like the angels found the shepherds in the night. On that night, we remember tonight. I mentioned last week how Luke's gospel is the gospel of the poor and the humble. And we can certainly see that in the way Christ came to us, right? Christ came to us in the darkest and longest night, in exhaustion, isolation, and rejection. Joseph and Mary were away from their home, from their family, from their land. They had been pushed away by the people of Bethlehem, and little did they know that they wouldn't be back in Nazareth for several years because the king would want to murder their child. And yet, this is in this reality that God chose to visit them and to be with them and to start over with the people. And God will actually visit them and be with them in a way that God's people has never experienced before. God will be with God's people in the flesh of a newborn. And of course, for us Christians, we know how throughout, throughout his life, how Jesus will continue to visit humble people, people plagued with poverty, disease, handicap, people scorned by other people, people cursed by their own wrongdoings, hurting themselves, hurting others, feeling lost and forsaken. Jesus came for all, had a message for all, had compassion on all, and was ready to start it all over again with each one of them, as God was ready to start it all over again after the exile in Jerusalem and on this holy night where God met God present in the flesh of an infant. What Christmas tells us is that there is no situation that God cannot visit, assume, and redeem. What Christmas tells us is that nothing is lost when God is present. Nothing is lost when God is present. And so it is for us, I guess. The example of our ancestors in faith shows us that however difficult the times God will still find a way for us. God will still find a way to us. And even maybe God will be with us in ways that God has never been before. It makes no difference to God the situation we are in. No matter how bad it seems to us, no matter the darkness, God promises that God will find us and will bring back to us joy, hope, and abundance, bread and wine, says the text, as God did in the ruins of Jerusalem, as God will do once again in the upper room on Jesus' last supper, and that we will remember in a few minutes. The prophets remind us that through it all, we are not forsaken. We are not forsaken, but rather sought after. That's the story of the Bible, that's the story of Christmas, and it can be your story too. So maybe like the shepherds in the field, the only thing we have to do is to allow God to find us in the depth of our night. I wish you all a very blessed Christmas. Amen. Please stand as we profess our faith in the word of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, our bishop Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, and for all bishops, for Franny, our priest, and for all clergy. That they, they may be faithful, faithful ministers of your, of your word and, and sacraments. We pray for all who have given and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for our President Joe, for our Governor Ralph, and for our Governor-elect Glenn, and for all leaders in this, this and every land, and for all men and women of our armed forces and those working abroad and their families at home, especially Nick. That there, there may be, be justice, justice and peace on, on the earth. earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our, our works, works may, may find, find favor, favor in, in your sight. sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for Mackenzie, Wally, Dave and Mikey, Kay Valerie, Betty, Jean, Renee, Mary and family, Raynell, Winston, Jimmy, Kathy, Mickey, Len, John Richard, Marion, Sharon, <coughs> Stephen, Ralph, Jim, Lou, Rich, David, Kathy, Heather, Jackie, Claudia, Jennifer, Brianna, Amparo, Winnie, Brett, Cherie, Glenn, Marlene, Kathy, and Bob, and Brenda, Fraser, and family. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let that light, light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. <clears throat> we pray tonight for all those who are celebrating Christmas throughout the world. Pray especially for the Christians who are persecuted for their faith. And we pray that our God will show us the way and will find a way for each one of us and to each one of us. Almighty and eternal God, who love all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Well, good evening, everybody, and Merry Christmas. I know it's uh, kind of a blue Christmas for everybody, um, but I'm thank you for being with us uh, tonight, either to volunteer or to um, join us online. Um, I hope you have a beautiful Christmas with your family and hopefully next year uh, the sanctuary will be full. Um, it's it's uh, kind of sad as well for me. I feel sorry. I have to celebrate my last service here at St. Margaret, um, not being able to say goodbye uh, to everybody uh, in person. So I just wanted to send you love and say thank you uh, for my time uh, here at St. Margaret's and wishing you the best uh, for yourself, your family, and of course for your church. Um, we will continue tonight with uh, the Eucharistic Prayer C. Uh, as most of the congregation is online, we're not going to share communion here, so we're going to do a spiritual communion. Um, but uh, as we do the prayer, I invite you to respond. It's a, it's a prayer with response, so uh, please do that, and we can have uh, communion in our hearts. What, um, and I forgot to say, uh, next Sunday uh, will be morning prayer. Uh, Daniel will be leading morning prayer on Zoom. That will be on the online service. And next Sunday as well, uh, morning prayer on Zoom. Walking love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you. 
forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth or island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal <laughs> elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the ruler of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. In the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, I took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of his holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feet. Hallelujah. I invite you to sit for a minute to um, pray in your heart. Please stand. Since we uh, receive Jesus in our heart, we can still say together the post communion prayer, giving thanks also for all the time we've been able to come to this table. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are very member of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us to do, to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say the, um, the blessing for Christmas. So after each sentence, you're invited to respond. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the world made flesh, join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. And uh, you may be seated while we listen to our closing hymn, Joy to the World.
please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. And thank you all and have a Merry Christmas. God bless you.